as a Barber Top Writer and Booker Prize nominee, Tisthi's Dangaremba was freed on bail on Saturday following arrest during an anti-government protest of the earlier. Dangaremba was charged with incitement to commit violence and breaching anti-coronavirus health regulations after staging a two-women demonstration in Harare, which coincided with the second anniversary of President MSC Magagwa's disputed election. She was taken away from the street corner in the upmarket Harare suburb of Borodale alongside another protester and hauled into a truck full of policemen armed with AK-47 rifles and riot gear. Police had banned the protest called the opposition political Jacob Nagaraume, head of the small party, called the Transform Zimbabwe against alleged state corruption and the country's slumping economy. The government had denounced the protests, calling them an insurrection. Well, for more on this, let's cross live now to Harare, where a political reporter with the Southern African Times, Farai Muvuti, joins us live. Farai has a keen interest in politics with a special interest in African foreign affairs, specifically from his home country, Zimbabwe. His political school of thought is drawn from Fanon Gramsci, Amical Cabral and others, and he often says that he's a confused Marxist and a deep pan-Africanist. Farai, many thanks for joining us on Newsday today. Let's get right into it. Why were Friday's protests planned and how come they failed? Uh, well, from the from our interaction with people in the, uh, who are uh, who are sympathetic to the uh, uh, to the uh, protests, as it were, uh, it appeared as if it was twofold. It was an anti-corruption protest, and simultaneously one that uh, wanted to ensure that government is to go. And I suppose the from the government's perspective, the aspect of uh, uh, wanting it to go, it being there by virtue of constitutionalism, uh, became a bit of uh, an insightful, well, implicit insightfulness in, in, in a sense. So part of the reasons why they were planned, of course, was to discuss the issue of, or rather uh, protest and challenge and, and contest the current uh, stage of uh, corruption, if you will. Uh, but equally, it, there was this hashtag moving around that was uh, a, a, an anti-government uh, hashtag. And as a consequence, I, uh, I, I well, in my, my understanding of government sentiment is that uh, it was uh, not going to be peaceful. All right, Farai. Um, right now, it's 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 good news that um, she has been let out on bail. But more importantly, looking at how things are playing now, how is the mood like in Zimbabwe or in Harare after her release? Right. Uh, There's uh, 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 something I must correct. I'm I'm currently in London, uh, but I do I am corresponding with people in Harare. Now, so, so from my correspondence, uh, Harare, and based on the people that report on behalf of the Southern African Times, we're getting a sentiment that that uh, there is a, 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 the, the mood in the country is is uh, quite peaceful, uh, tranquil in two sense. But of course, you have the uh, there, there is the pandemic. Uh, which is the backdrop, which is the huge backdrop. So there is anxiety around issues relating to public health uh, based on reports that we have uh, received and because we, we are more concerned about uh, issues relating to market intelligence as it concerns Africa. Uh, and so the mood so far, there is that aspect of, you know, uh, are we going to get out of this uh, in terms of the pandemic? And there's equally the political hangover of the, the, the 30, 31st of July, that, uh, you know, how, how is the opposition, the, the absence of the opposition? I, I speak to people that are sympathetic to the opposition. And what they're saying is that, well, we don't seem to have a sense of where they stand on this particular issue. And it's a bit concerning from that particular sphere of, uh, of the, the, the society section, uh, the section of society. But as it concerns, uh, uh, you know, the general mood of the country, uh, I think uh, they, uh, they, it's, it's, it's back to, it's back to, you know, adhering to lockdown conditions. Farai, many thanks for that. Now, do you, going back to uh, Cici Dangarimba and her arrest, do you think that it's right that she was arrested or charged, rather, with incitement to commit violence and breaching anti-coronavirus health regulations? And how do you take President Manangangwa's um, comments, the anti-government protests, he said in quotes, anti-government protests in Zimbabwe are a revolt by the opposition, and his characteristics of protests that are kind of like an insurrection? Oh, well, let's start with the, the president's commentary. Uh, we, we had, of course, engagement with the Ministry of Information to ascertain as to, uh, you know, the rationale behind this. 
And uh, they alluded to one of their, they, they had a press conference on Saturday last week, uh, which which uh, I think featured predominantly on, on, on other, uh, I'm not sure if you guys were able to cover it, cover it. We, we covered it quite widely. And what, what they were basically arguing is that uh, the intelligence community within Zimbabwe is under the suspicion that there is a an, an external hand that wants to create a sense of anarchy. And when you correlate that to uh, the timing of the war, uh, when uh, when there's an increase of uh, of, of uh, COVID cases uh, as it pertains to uh, 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 you know the the issues uh, the challenges that the healthcare system in Zimbabwe has, they the government feels that it is the timing is not only bad but it also plays into this uh, the, the 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 ditherings that the, uh, the, the or rather the statements that the intelligence community have in terms of. Uh, uh, the involvement of external an external hand um, in this particular instance. So I would imagine that the the president's sentiments were informed by that particular intelligence. Now, as as it relates to to Titi, um, I, I think you know one has to look at it in two folds. You see, uh, there is the aspect of yes, uh, she's an esteemed writer and uh, an esteemed uh, you know. Uh, you know, citizen within Zimbabwe, uh, and uh, of course, uh, you know, one one must be uh, uh, be be, be uh, sympathetic to that experience. Uh, but in our interactions, as you know, I'm I'm here to be descriptive rather than being one who agrees or disagrees. Basing it on what the government is arguing, it's simply saying that listen, we had we had the backdrop of uh, two senior leaders of our government and uh, rather country, from one from the military and the other being a minister of agriculture, who just passed away a day before from COVID. And we had enhanced uh, COVID regulations as to preserve life uh, and to ensure that uh, public health comes first as a consequence of the current climate that we're in. Uh, a betrayal to that a breach of that is breaking the law. And this is what she has had to face on the basis of the legitimate health concerns. All right, so Farai, talk to me. How is the international community reacting to this particular news? Well, I think, you know, I think what has happened, and I think you would find you would agree with me that in Africa, when it comes to the negative aspects or negative issues or things that are perceived to be negative, the absence of nuance tends to inform, you know, uh, the global north. Uh, the global south, in terms of you know the uh, you know in terms of the reportage around uh, Zimbabwe and Africa in general, tends to have a more uh, sort of uh, willingness to engage in the in-depth nuances. Whereas in the global north, we don't seem to say, see that. So there's been a tagline that, well, Zimbabwe is, is back to, you know, the, the old tactics. It's back to, you know, the, uh, you know, sort of a dictatorship, if you will. And that is the narrative. Uh, and so what we seek to do is try to engage with this narrative from the basis of nuance. Uh, because we, we, we feel that the, the argument of Zimbabwe is to be told, as is any, any case with any African country, if you take, for instance, Kenya, which has had over 127 people, uh, you know, uh, killed by virtue of, uh, be it uh, police brutality and so forth. That narrative you tend not to see. So there is a geopolitical dynamic at play here that, when it as it concerns Zimbabwe. So to us, you know, as a, as a special reporting team, it's something that we're intrigued by and really want to find out what the nuances are that inform this particular issue. But as I said, yes, to the West, uh, the tagline here is quite uh, very, very uh, abrasive. And uh, and uh, it's it's a continuation of what we saw pre 2017. Certainly, and on that note as well, because critics are trying to critics do compare uh, President Nangagwa to the late Robert Mugabe. Is this something that you agree with? Is that a comparison that you think is fair? Well, I mean, uh, firstly, you have to consider that uh, the, the, the former president was in power for 38 years. So it, it, it would, uh, and and the current president has been in power for the last two. Um, it would be from an analytical standpoint only. It would be too soon to say uh, that one is, uh, you know, acting in a dictatorial manner. But what we have seen, or well, rather, to justify this point, is that as from an analytical standpoint, what we have seen is uh, quite a lot of reforms from the basis of uh, a repealing of very uh, 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 repressive uh, media laws, IPA, POSA laws that were very common in Zimbabwe that would, uh, you know, literally, uh, you know, were not were not uh, 
conducive for the media uh, environment at the time. We've seen a repealing of that law and a replacing it of a more balanced, more uh, uh, sort of uh, engagement driven uh, uh, law as it relates to the media. Uh, and you'd find that uh, on, on top of that, you'd find that there has been an, a, a sort of like a heightened approach to wanting to engage. So uh, I think uh, from to it, it's, it's an unfair comparison at this moment. So I would not consider it to be one that, uh, uh, you know, we, sh we should actually judge too soon. I mean, there are many nuances in terms of the evolution of a country. I think Zimbabwe is currently going through what they now call the Second Republic. And as a consequence, uh, to judge it from the basis of uh, uh, yet, uh, a media outrage and the consequence of issues that are not well nuanced, I think would be missing. All right, Farai, um, we know that... She and 11 others who were arrested or who were detained on Saturday and to appear in court on the 18th of September. Um, is there any sense that she will be given fair hearing? Well, um, you know, we often have this discussion when, uh, when I, I speak to leaders of the opposition. I was having uh, uh, a discussion with someone from uh, what they call the MDC team. Uh, as you may know, uh, that there are currently uh, two MDCs. There's the MDC Alliance and there's the MDCT. And um, we, we were, we were we, in, in our discussion, what I, ga what I gained as insights is that when the opposition has a, uh, be it a law or a, be it a judgment rather, or a vindication from the courts that is sides with their argument, they tend to be agreeable with the institution that is given it. But when it isn't, it, they denigrate the institution. Uh, and so when it comes to answering your question, will the judgment be fair? Uh, I think uh, basing it on history I and mean, talking to lawyers from both sides, there is, a, there is a sentiment that the judicial system is fair because it has, in many occasions, acted against government's will. So I do not think that it's the question of the judiciary being uh, uh, able to deliver um, uh, a justice-based a justice -based, uh, uh, outcome is, 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 is in the question at the time, I, I, because there have been multiple examples where that has, has happened in favor or not favor of government. Many thanks for Ryan Mavuti, political reporter at the Southern African Times, for your analysis and time this afternoon. It's much appreciated. Thank you so much.